In today's video, I'm going to show you my exact process of how I turn piles of clothing into cash on eBay. So I have a couple goals of this video, but the biggest one is to teach you how to get through your death piles or through loads of inventory very, very fast. Say I just got back from a thrift store. This is my bag of items. The very first thing I do is always take the items out of the bag and I start taking the tags off. We'll pop that over there and then we'll put that item wherever you can put it. Same thing with this. We'll take the tag off. Fantastic. Now this bag is empty. We're gonna put the tags and put them in there and we're gonna get rid of this because we're making it clean. I want you guys to be as clean as possible when you work. So get all this junk out of the way first. Get the tags, clean whatever you need to clean, get it all out of your space so everything in front of you is nicely, neatly organized and it's ready for you to start processing. So step number two is actually putting everything into similar piles. This will make sense later on, but for right now, all we're doing is separating the tops from the bottoms. Put them in two separate piles, just make it all nicely organized and I promise you later in this video, it will make a ton of sense. Step number three is gonna start involving our computer and we're gonna actually start processing these items and writing down some information about them. Say for example, right here, we have this Woolrich barn chore hooded uh, duck canvas jacket. It's a men's XL. So we have all those details about this item. Now what I'm actually gonna do is go into this spreadsheet on Google Sheets and start inputting that. What this becomes is our item title for later on in the video. This makes it super, super easy. If you do wanna download the spreadsheet, it is in the free course, you can get it there and all that good stuff, but it's not rocket science, you can make this yourself. So again, for this, we would just type in Woolrich, barn, chore, jacket, coat, whatever you wanna call it. So right now, what I'm also gonna do is check the item for any damage. Obviously in the thrift store, I kind of looked it over, but having a second and a third look is always important when it comes to used clothing because you can definitely miss some stuff while you're out and about. So like for this jacket, we're missing the zipper pull and we got a couple marks, but overall it's in great shape. So I'm gonna note that as well. Next thing we need to do, which is really, really critical when it comes to clothing, guys, please measure your clothes. It takes you two seconds, it avoids customer headaches, it makes sales way easier, and it makes customers happy since they know what they're actually getting. All we're using right now is a Taylor's tape. These things are like three bucks on Amazon. You can grab one in the link in my description below. For tops, it's super simple. All we're gonna do is measure the pit to pit, which is 27 and a half. We're gonna rotate the garment, and then we're gonna measure the length. From the bottom of the collar down to the hem is 31. So now we have those measurements. We're gonna input them into the spreadsheet as well. All the measurements are done, all the items are stacked into piles, everything is in that same order that we checked it in into the spreadsheet, and we're gonna take pictures in that same exact order. Let's talk about the lighting setup that I'm gonna use because this is a question I get asked all the time. First of all, this is a Godox SL60W. It's just a continuous video light, nothing too crazy. It's not a strobe like a flash, it just stays on all the time. It's intended for video, very well respected in like the budget lighting category for videographers. If you do wanna check it out, link will be in the description. And then pairing it with this. This is a Octabox or a soft box. If it was a box, it'd be a box, but it's not a box. Pretty much it's a light diffuser. What we do here is we pop it open. We take this piece of white cloth and it just Velcros inside. And that's what it looks like when it's ready. What this does is actually diffuses the light coming out from this light. And if you were just to shine it bare onto an item, the shadows would be disgusting. All right, so we've moved over a few feet and this is actually gonna be the photography wall. We live in a really small one bedroom apartment. I don't have a proper photo studio anymore, but this wall, believe it or not, works really well and I'll explain that to you guys in a second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle it over here and lift it up a little bit. We definitely wanna be like angled and shooting down towards an item rather than like shooting up towards it because it just won't look right. And then don't forget to plug it in. As you can see, the light is on behind me. It's super bright. The thing is with this, since we're only using one light, we definitely want to avoid shadows as much as possible. Instead of like having this straight on to the item, what we're going to do is we're going to tilt this and kind of turn it out. So it's actually hitting the door over here. The light is bouncing off of that door and kind of creating like this little like cube of light, if that makes sense. So it's almost mimicking a second light source, even though we're only using one light. Now again, how fancy you wanna get is totally up to you, but I'm gonna be using just this plastic clear hanger that has pant hangers on it too. And then over there, we got a little nail in the wall. That's it. 
If you want to get like a cute hanger, you could do whatever you want to do, but this works totally fine for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab our first item. I'm going to pop it onto this hanger. And I'm going to pop it onto the wall. So I typically use my camera to actually take photos, which is the Fujifilm X-H1 that you see right there. And then this lens is a 23 1.4. But for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to show you guys on my phone because I know many of you just use your phones for photos and listings. So let's hop into the phone. Let's show you how I actually take Take photos. So obviously using a phone and a camera is a little bit different, but you'll get the point. So first photo is always going to be a picture of the front. Typically next I'll do some like close-ups, like it shows guide wear there. I'll like show the buttons. If the collar has something interesting, like this one has snaps, I'll typically show that. Then I'll go in here, I'll take a picture of the inside label. Doesn't really matter so much if your fingers are in it because I'm going to crop them out later. And then typically I'll take a picture of the shirt cuff. We always want to make sure we get pictures of the materials because people will ask for that as well. And we take a picture of that. Then I'll turn this bad boy around. We'll just get a picture of the back. So that's my photography process. If you want to overcomplicate this, you can. If you want to make it even simpler, you can. You could just use a big natural source of light, like a nice window, or even shoot the item outside. You don't even need a light. You don't need a wall with a nail in it. Now what we're going to do is hop into the computer. I'm going to show you my editing process. Okay, so now on the computer, the first thing I do is obviously import my photos, and then I put them into Lightroom, and I start doing some really basic edits. This is all sped up, but all I'm doing here is cropping out things like my fingers, zooming in a little bit, uh, changing the exposure, adding some contrast, and all those good things. If you want to learn how I get eBay listings done in under 90 seconds, make sure to watch this video. Smash that like button if this was helpful, and until next time, cheers.